A blessed good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to today's devotion with Father Christian. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading for today, Friday, 4th June, is written in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 16. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us eagerly, in earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord, and, by the will of God, to us, so that we might urge Titus that, as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. But thanks be to God, who put in the heart of Titus the same eagerness for you that I myself have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this letter to the Corinthians, Paul has promised the Church of Jerusalem that he will take up a collection in the churches he has founded abroad to help the poor of Jerusalem. He urges the congregation of Corinth to be generous and offers motivations for giving. These reasons may also motivate us to be generous in church support and contribute to help those who are in need. Now, according to Paul, the churches, the churches in Macedonia had given money even though they were poor, and they had given more than Paul expected. This was sacrificial giving. They were poor themselves, but they wanted to help. Fellow Christians, Paul sees giving as following the example of Jesus, who was willing to become poor to enrich us. Such sharing is never to be measured by how much, but rather by how able. We share in proportion to what we have. 
The goal of giving is to distribute with the body of Christ and the community so that the needs of all will be met. The church and Paul has always preached that persons should give of what they have, not what they don't have. Sacrificial giving must be responsible. The church wants believers to give generously, but not to the extent that those who depend on their givers, their families for example, must go without having their basic needs met. Give until it hurts, but don't give so that it hurts your family and all relatives who need your financial support. So give, my friends, in proportion to what God has given you. God gives to us so that we can give to others. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The collect for today, the season of the Pentecost, proper four. Let us pray. Lord God of the nations, you have revealed your will to all people and promised us your saving help. May we hear and do what you command, that the darkness may be overcome by the power of your light, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Call it for Fridays. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the divine assistance remain with us always. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Do have a blessed day and a wonderful weekend, my friends. God be with you till we meet again.